All right. Uh, we're going to continue with the resume from the last video. We were at the skills section. The skills section is where you type uh, things that you're good at. And from being in this class, you are good at working with Word, Excel, Access, and PowerPoint. You'll have these software skills coming out of this class. Uh, next, I want you to tell me um, three things about yourself that uh, describe your personality. For example, are you dependable, hardworking, and reliable? You can come up with any three terms that describe you. Next, if you've had a part-time job and you've obtained some job skills, for example, you might be a good cashier and um, employers always like individuals who have some background in working with money. Uh, if you've had some sales experience, you could list those. Now, if you haven't had those experiences, let's just go with the top two bullets. Next, for education, you're just going to include Northfield High School. If any of you have been involved in uh, either PSEO or have attended more than one high school, let me know when you're working on this, and I'll help you set that up. What For your completion date, what you want to do is put the year that you begin Again, uh, attending Northfield High School, and um, if you're 9th, 10th, or 11th grade, you're going to say that year to present. So if I'm a 9th grader, I'm going to say, okay, I started Northfield High School in 2012 to present, okay? If I'm a junior, or excuse me, sophomore, it would be 2011 to present. If I'm a junior, it would be 2010 to present. And if I'm a senior, you can, you would put, uh, what would that be, 2009? to 2013. If you're a senior, you can say, yep, this is when I'm going to graduate. Your accomplishments are the things that you've done while you're in high school. For example, if you've taken a lot of classes in a particular content area, you can list that out. If you've been involved in any AP or honors classes, you can list those out. Uh, if you've been involved in, in athletics, you could list the particular sports that you've been a part of. If you've been able to be a captain in one of those, you will list that also. Um, so I'm just going to say athletics. You would list whatever activities you're in. Students who are in rock and roll uh, could list that out because that's a huge commitment. If you've been involved in any plays or uh, one act plays, uh, if you've been in any clubs or organizations such as DECA or mock trial or some of those organizations, youth in government, you can list all of those things out and my students who have taken advanced computer apps, they would be able to say they were MOS certified in Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. These are all things about what your life as a student, it explains what you've been involved with. Experience then is where you would list any job experiences you have. And first I'm going to show the example for your current part-time job if you're employed somewhere. And then I'll show the example of maybe you've been babysitting or snow shoveling or those kinds of things. So we'll say, first of all, for the students who have had part-time job experience, uh, I will say I started this job in September of 2012 and I am still employed, so it's present. Some of you may have had seasonal positions. You might have worked at the ice rink or for the parks department or maybe even for the school district. Uh, and you would list then, the, you know, the name, whichever organization you worked for. And you could say summers, you know, 2011 and 2012. And you can say in parentheses seasonal. And then here, this is pretty self-explanatory. You list the types of things that you do. Uh, you know, the type of things that, ah, goodness sakes, that you have been involved with. Uh, whatever those tasks might be. But notice I don't say any I statements here. So if you, now, if you haven't had a, um, a organized job, but you have babysat, include that here. Because that shows that others are willing to keep their children with you and um, that's great and then you would list the tasks that you do as part of caring for children. Same thing with shoveling or with lawn mowing if you have families that you help out. 
you would go ahead and list those pieces. All right, next we are going to move on to um, working with uh, mail merge. And on the side counter, I have made some handouts that have names and addresses of individuals because we're going to set up that information. This is also available from your data files. It's called Bank bank customers. We're going to have to enter this information in though so that you don't have to be clicking back and forth if you want to grab one of the handouts to use to just have that in front of you when we enter this information. But we're going to go ahead and open a new blank document at this time and we're going to set up a mail merge. Uh, we could also for example, this letter that we created in the first document, we could create this document to be a mail merge. And how that would work is we, rather than saying, dear customer here, we would just delete all of that so that we could um, set up the process so that it would insert the names and addresses of the individuals that we wanted to send this document to. I think I'm going to get rid of that. Um, uh, colon there also. Okay, so here's how this works. If it's a blank document and you're going to type the letter that you typed, you can have that open or if you have this document available, let's go ahead and use it to practice from. And how we make this work is through the mailings. Those of you, um, especially seniors who will be sending out uh, graduation open houses soon, you can use the same process to print to envelopes or to print to um, postcards if that's how you might be announcing your graduation party uh, this spring. But anyway, here's how this process works. So we want to start a mail merge by, by merging names and addresses into a letter. And so we tell it that we are going to start that mail merge. Okay, doesn't look like anything's happened yet. The next step is we are going to set up the people that we want to send this letter to. So we're going to type a new list and we get a document that looks like this. Now um, the title would be the Mr. Ms. first last name company um, and uh, in this case what we can do is we can uh, set this up so we don't use all of these particular field categories as we're going through them because you'll notice there's some that that we won't be using. But let's go ahead right now and type in the information that we have for uh, the three people that we'll be mailing this letter to and once again this is you from the handouts that are on the counter. So I'm going to go line by line. So my first entry is Ms. Uh, Bianca, great name. Vega and I'm pressing my tab. Now I don't have a company information but I do have an address so I'm going to uh, type in her address in the first address spot. I'm just going to skip the uh, the uh, company one and I'm going to press my tab twice to get over to the city and the state. I'm going to use two letters state in all caps and the zip code. Okay, then I'm done with this one and I'm going to go to new entry now. So I can get rid of those columns that I don't need. I can go to customize and I can say, you know what? I don't need a company name. I don't need address line two. Um, I don't need a country or region. And these last ones here, home phone, work phone, email address, we're not going to be putting any information there, so we could certainly uh, get rid of those. Also, if for any reason we wanted to change the order that these appear, we could move them up or down. Uh, we're, our order is actually good. So now when I come back in, I have only the fields that I need other than the phone number ones that I'm not going to use. And I'm ready to enter my second person's information now. Oops, and I made a mistake here. I typed uh, the last name in the first name field, so I'm going to get rid of that and go on and make sure that I hit tab each time. And I'm going to add one more here. I only have three customers that I'm going to use. But if you were doing this for something personal, at this point you would set up all these people's names and addresses in this what's called an address list. And this is saved as part of, it's saved on your hard drive to 
if you do this at home and it's associated with words so that's how you would open it up again and I'll show you what the icon looks like it's a little different when we get to that point Okay, so I have now entered, and I'm going to double check here. Did I make any mistakes? I see I missed a, a capital here. Easiest, not impossible to change it if you made a mistake, but just take a moment to look through your information. Did you accidentally, uh, you know, mistype anything as I did? You need to go back in and fix it. All right, I think I'm good now. All right, so I now have this address list created and it's saying where do you want to save it? It's going to save it in this preset option and it's going to save it automatically to a folder called My Data Sources. So if you don't want to use that particular folder, um, notice how I just clicked on my name up here and I could get back to my computer apps folder. Um, it does need to be saved and this is uh, created so that it pre-saves your information and um, let's see I think I'll go ahead and put it in my word folder here and uh, it's saved as bank customers but it'll be saved and it's going to look like actually a Microsoft Access recommendation alright so now it, it uh, jumped away from the document that I wanted to actually insert it in so I've started my mail merge remember I already said yep doing the letter and now I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and use an existing list. This is how it knows what I want to do. And I'm going to navigate at this time to where I saved the bank customers that I just created. And that was in my computer apps folder. I had a practice folder. So I'm going to navigate there. Well, that's strange. There we go. And so when you get to the correct spot, you're going to see that it has a little icon that looks like this for Microsoft Access. And you're going to want to access that list of customers. Now as soon as I did that, notice that I'm seeing all of these were not available. Now they are. And so I've selected my recipients. If I wanted to look at it again and make sure that everything was correct, and I think the example I showed just had two names instead of the three because I've had a couple different options saved. So that's all right. Um, anyway, now what I can do right here is I can say I want to put the address block right here. That means the name and address of the customers. And this is what it would look like. And you can go ahead and click and preview what these are going to look like the one I chose I only had the two as an example but I do want to have the courtesy title I do want the postal address and so these are correct so I'll go ahead and do that and it says address block here when I run the merge I'm going to see them okay next I'm going to say dear and I'm going to insert merge fields next and I'd like to insert title space last name colon and when I do the get these pieces in now I've got the information that I want to merge so I'm going to start my mail uh, let's see gotta think insert merge feed oh there we go I'm going to finish if I want to preview I've got this right here where um, this shows that I'm going to have these two so if I preview my results I can see that I have this information. Now as I'm looking at this, I'm noticing that uh, my names are in normal versus uh, no spacing, so I can go in and fix that so that they're spaced correctly. Come back to my mailings and I'll go ahead and finish and I can print, I can email. If I want to just see them, I can do it that way too and it gave me a blank page in between but all of my spacing is correct and so I could delete those blank pages and I am now good to go. So you can uh, go and work on your